So you're about to edit your first YouTube video. You're probably overwhelmed and don't know where to start. Well, how do I know this? Cause I've been creating videos over five years now and I really want to help you guys. So in today's video, I'll be giving you guys 10 super easy steps that you can follow in order to edit your first YouTube video from start to finish using a super easy online editor called InVideo. Before I tell you guys these steps, quickly hop on to InVideo and sign up for a free account so you can follow along. Once you're done with that, we can start with step number one. Step number one is importing and organizing. Go ahead and import all your footage to InVideo. To start uploading your footage, click on upload media. In case you want to organize things further, click on folders and create new folder. Organizing your footage well will help you ahead to be more efficient and faster with your editing. The next step is adding all your footage in an orderly manner on the timeline. To start adding videos to the timeline, click on the footage that you want at the very start. InVideo will open up another window for you where you can choose the starting and the ending point for this clip. Once you do that, press on done and the video should be added to the timeline. In a similar fashion, you can go ahead and create a rough timeline of your entire video. In case your video is a faceless video, that means it only has a voiceover and other videos and images playing on top, you can make use of InVideo's inbuilt stock video library which offers you high resolution stock footage. You can simply search for the keywords and find the right footage for your video. Don't worry if it looks a little choppy right now, we will clean it up later. Let's move on to step number 3 and that is trimming and cutting. Go ahead and cut out any parts that are not necessary for your video. Any instance where you have repeated something or there's an awkward silence, anything that should not be there in the final video. You can simply do this by going to the point where you want to begin the cut. Go ahead, click on the scissor icon. This will split your footage into two different clips. Simply go to the end point of the cut, do the same thing again and delete that section. Now you should be left with a little empty spot right in between. To get rid of this, you can simply right click and click on ripple delete. Make sure you spend enough time doing this as you want your viewers to have a seamless experience. Now coming down to step number four and this is the hook. It would be extremely challenging to catch a fish without a hook. In the same way, it would be extremely tough to keep your viewers attention on your YouTube video without a hook. A hook is nothing but the initial part of the video that gives gives your viewers a context on what they are about to watch. Let's say you're creating a vlog. In this case, the hook would be the most entertaining parts of your vlog. Cut them, compile them, add them at the very start with the text that says coming up in this video. This would intrigue your viewer to keep watching as they have a sense on what's about to come up. For the second example, let's say you're making a video listing the top 10 most expensive things owned by Elon Musk. In this case, you'll have a small voiceover before you start the list that says that you'll be covering these things with visuals of Elon Musk, his house, the car he owns, just to intrigue your viewers to watch more. So now you guys understand how important the hook is. So make sure you spend enough time on it. The next step is actually making your cuts look seamless and adding transitions. At this point, you have a rough timeline of your video ready. Now it's time to seamlessly stitch all of this together so that it looks like one beautifully made YouTube video. Now there are a couple of tricks that you can use to make this happen. One simple trick would be zooming in and zooming out between every single cut. You can simply take the marker to the point where you've spoken perfectly. Once you've found that point, you can go ahead, click on the the icon and split your footage into two separate clips. Take the marker to the point where you have stopped fumbling, again click on the scissor icon. They should again split your footage into two separate clips and delete the part which is in the center which is essentially the part you do not want to have in your final video. Now you can go ahead, take the marker on the second clip, click on it, simply zoom in the clip slightly. Now when you play it back, it should look something like this and this is how you can simply hide a cut. Another way to do this is let's say if you're switching scenes, you're home and now you're heading out. Between this, you can go ahead and add a transition. Now to start creating transitions, simply place your second clip on top of your first clip something like this. Now click on the second clip as that's the one you want to be animating. Go ahead, click on animation on top. Now in video, we'll show you two options which is animation in and animation out. In basically meaning the animation should be at the start, out meaning the animation should be at the end. Now obviously we want to have the transition at the start so now I can go ahead click on that and now InVideo has a bunch of inbuilt transition ready for you. One of my personal favorites is slide. Once you click on that, simply like that, your transition is ready and your final product should look something like this. Another thing that you can do is actually add text every time you're seeing something. But keep in mind you can't just do this randomly, only do this on words that you're emphasizing on something like this. Now in order to replicate this style, find the point where you would want to add the text. The first step would be actually blacking out the screen. So now you can go ahead on the left hand side panel and click on shapes. Let's say for this example, we take the rectangle shape. As soon as you click on it, InVideo will add it to your timeline. Resize it so it fills the entire screen and you can go ahead and click on this bucket icon on top to stylize it the way you want it. You can mess around with the color, the opacity, however you would like it. For this particular example, I would like to go with simple black. Once you're done with that, go to the left hand side panel and click on text. Once you do that, you can go ahead and click on add a heading. 
Once you do that, a text layer will be added to your timeline. Make sure this is on top of your shape. Once you double click on it, you can go ahead and type whatever you would want on this box right over here. Once you do that, make sure your text is right in the center and change fonts. And video offers you a large range of fonts that you can choose from to make sure that you get what you're looking for. And just like that, your effect is ready. The next step is adding B-rolls. For anyone who does not understand what a B-roll is, it's basically a visual key given to your viewers while you're talking about a certain topic. Let's say I'm talking about this camera. This is a Canon R5C, which is the latest cinema line camera offered by Canon. Now, as you all noticed, as soon as I speak about it, I added clips of the camera on how it looks, some close-ups right above my voiceover. This is nothing but your B-roll. Now, to start adding B-roll, you can simply add it on top of the layer of your talking head. Now, in case you're missing some footage, you can simply go to the video library on NVIDIA, search for the right keywords and I'm pretty sure you should be able to find what you're looking for. So adding B-rolls to your videos is an extremely powerful tool through which you can keep your viewers attention for a long time. The key rule to remember over here is to have something happening on the screen every five to six seconds. This assures that the viewer is engaged while watching your content. Obviously this is not a compulsion but try to do it wherever possible. Now before we go on to step number seven I would like to congratulate you as your video is almost ready. Now the next steps are just going to be about fine detailing and making your video as attractive as possible. The next step is adding text or slides. Now text can be an extremely strong component when it comes to making your videos look more professional. Like simple headings like this that can help you introduce yourself. The same way you can make use of slides every time you're jumping to a different section of your video. You would have already seen that even I am doing this throughout this video. Now you can easily achieve this as NVIDIA offers a variety of fonts, textiles, animations, so go crazy, experiment, try to create something new, try to create something that matches your vibe, your theme. We come to step number eight and that is adding music. Music plays an extremely important role into adding weight to your words. For example, if I'm saying something motivational, I will back it up with a motivational track. If I'm just vlogging or chilling, I probably have some hip hop or lo-fi playing in the background. If I want to make things sound sad, I could add something emotional. And this is one of the reasons I love NVIDIA because it offers you music by segregating it in different genres. Start off by clicking on the music icon on the left hand side panel. After this, decide the genre you want the soundtrack from. Now start playing different soundtracks until you find the right one for your video. Click on the plus icon and NVIDIA should add it to the timeline. Once the soundtrack is added to the timeline, you can click on volume and fade and choose what volume you want the sound to be. Make sure the music is not too loud so that your audience can hear you clearly. You can go through hundreds of tracks and use them in your YouTube video as they are copyright free and you won't get a copyright strike. Keep in mind when you're talking the music should not be extremely loud as it's something subtle that makes a big difference. But once you're done adding your music, your sound effects, it's finally time for the second last step and that is color grading. Color grading is another aspect that you can use to make your content visually more appealing. Now, although professional color grading is a pretty complicated process, but NVIDIA has made it easier for you guys. You can simply go to the color section. You have a bunch of filters that you can experiment with. Once you find the one that you like, you can also mess around with the intensity of it. You gotta make sure that it's not too much, not too less, just in the right quantities. Now for a first time, this can be a little bit of a lengthy process, but stick with it. So don't stress out the first time, just keep doing it. And finally, once you're done color grading, it is time to add your end screen. Yes, if you're uploading your video to YouTube, you do need an end screen. And for this, NVIDIA has inbuilt templates that can make things extremely easy for you. So once you're done editing your entire video, you can click on templates on the left hand side panel. This is where you can find a bunch of pre-made templates that NVIDIA provides to make your videos better. Over here on top, you will find a box which says search templates. Simply go ahead and search for outro. Now NVIDIA will present you with a bunch of outro screens that you can choose from. So if you have a gaming channel, if you have a vlogging channel, however you like your outro to be. For this example, let's say I like this one right over here. I can click on it and click on the plus icon. After this, NVIDIA will simply add this as a different scene on my timeline. In case you want to make changes again into your main video, simply click on the first scene and click on show layers. And that simply, you have a professional looking outro screen. And once you're done adding the end screen, it is time to export your video. You can simply go ahead, export it, make sure to choose the right resolution, choose the highest, and it is ready to be uploaded on YouTube. And that is a roundup of the 10 easy steps that you can follow to edit and publish your first YouTube video without having to download any software or spending hours learning to edit. But with this, this is Virag with NVIDIA, and I'll see you guys in the next one.